enemy. I look forward to discussing our new partnership to establish the dynamic ventilator reserve. Uh, as you know, hospitals throughout the country currently have more than 60,000 unused ventilators. It's uh, — you probably never had so many, have you? Or what do you think? Are you building up, or are you going down? Are you going in the right direction? Slowly. Yeah, slowly. But we're building thousands of them right now. We're grateful that, uh, through this initiative, your hospitals are committing to lend unused surplus ventilators to other hospitals if they have an immediate need, and you've been doing that. We appreciate it. FEMA and HHS will support this initiative by guaranteeing that, in the unlikely event, a lending hospital needs — if there is a big lending need, more ventilators, we will make sure that we have them. We will make sure that you get them. And we're a great backup for you. We are building literally thousands of ventilators right now, as you know, and they're uh, they're starting to come in. Other countries have also been asking us for ventilators. I don't know if you've been having that situation, but we're being asked by other — I just got off the phone with the President of France, and uh, we are being asked about ventilators from everybody, everybody. Uh, when the virus struck our nation, governors raised fears that People who needed ventilators would not get the ventilators. My administration has used the Defense Production Act, and it's really had a big impact on uh, companies and companies wanting to you know, get them done and get them done quickly. We're preparing ventilator capacity for any and all scenarios. Initiatives like the Dynamic Ventilator Reserve will help us to achieve that goal. We need ventilators, but now we're pretty well stocked. We really needed them. We took over a country which was uh, — I've been saying to a lot of people, they don't like to write it, but the cupboards were bare in many ways, including ventilators. In addition, under the Defense Production Act, the United States will produce or acquire more than 32,000 ventilators by the end of May. And over — listen to this one — 150,000 ventilators by the end of the year. So we're going to have more ventilators by the end of the year we've ever even thought possible. And we'll be helping out some of the states, but we'll be helping out other countries, too, which I think we have uh, — on a humane basis, we have an obligation to do. We're getting tremendous calls from Italy and France and Spain and a lot of other countries beyond that. By the end of the week, HHS will finish distributing the first $30 billion in direct payments to more than 300,000 hospitals and healthcare providers. If you don't need it, please let me know. We won't make the check available to you. I think you people have been having a hard time, from what I'm understanding. You're having a hard time, and I understand that very well. All facilities that accept Medicare payments are receiving funding based on the amount of Medicare fee-for-service payments that you received in 2019, if that makes sense. Is that — is that what you're looking at, right? Soon, HHS will distribute additional funds from the remaining $70 billion provided in the CARES Act — a big deal to get that passed. A significant amount of this money will go to the hospitals and hotspots, while a portion of it will reimburse hospitals for the cost of treating uninsured patients and uh, for the coronavirus. So I think that's pretty much what we've been talking about and what you're looking at. So uh, now, I think what we'll do is I'd like to uh, — maybe in front of the media, you can go around to table quickly, just introduce uh, yourself and your uh, association, your hospital, or whatever it is, whoever you're representing, and uh, say a couple of words if you'd like. Please, we'll start with you, Sam. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Sam Hazen, CEO of ATA Healthcare. Uh, we have 185 hospitals across the uh, country, and uh, we're proud to be a partner with the federal government. We think uh, that's the only way fundamentally to um, solve this crisis, and we're proud to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Sam. Please. I'm Mikkel Moore. I'm Chief Community Health Officer for Intermountain Healthcare. Intermountain's based in Salt Lake City, Utah, a not-for-profit integrated system. Um, we're testing about 65 percent of those getting tested in our communities right now, and, and the surge is fairly small in our community. And we believe that this is so going to be a long-term. Much term. of a problem relative to other places. Yeah, relative to other places, and and not yet. And we know that this is going to be a dynamic situation. And so we appreciate the opportunity to collaborate with the federal government, and with our colleagues, hospitals across the country, because we think flexibility is really important to being able what to meet the needs. What tests are you using? Uh, we're using a few different tests. We have some biofire tests. Some uh, of the Abbott, Abbott tests. Mm -hmm. 
How do you find the Abbott test? Quick. Uh, yes, yes. But fast. you're finding uh, uh, the antibody tests, are you using that too? Uh, we're just uh, exploring antibody tests right now. I uh, want to be careful about how we deploy that. And right. because we don't have many people who've been exposed to the disease in our communities, it might not be time That's yet great. for antibody testing. So. That's great. How many cases do you have, would you say, in your community? We have about 2,400 in the state of Utah. So it's relatively very small. Relatively small um, and, and gives us concern about what can happen if we right. relax. Right. But but we are being diligent. Yeah, it's a great job. You've done a great job. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Please. Mr. President, I'm David Dill. I'm the President and CEO of LifePoint Health. We own and operate 88 hospitals spread out through 29 states in smaller communities, uh, which I know are communities very important to you. We applaud the efforts of your administration on dispersing the $30 billion in funds quickly. Uh, our ask is that we continue to deploy the remaining $70 billion uh, rural hospitals are a very important part of the infrastructure of this country uh, and also treating the uninsured and the Medicaid population as well. So thank you for what you've done. We have not seen a significant surge at this point either, although our caregivers have done a fantastic job of preparing. And so we are- what area do you cover mostly, David? All over the country, 29 different states. Think about the middle part of the country. We don't have, hosp we have, uh, we don't have any hospitals on the West Coast. Uh, in California, also in the Northeast, but virtually every state in between so are where we have hospitals. There are places that don't have the big hot spots, right? That's right. We, are, we only have a couple of hundred COVID patients today in our hospitals. Wow. Uh, our biggest risk, I believe, are nursing homes. And so protecting our nursing homes, making sure that our nursing homes are stable. And so you're very careful. And there. we're very careful That's there. That's great. Yeah. Great job, David. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yes. Mr. President, Joe Impichike, uh, President and CEO of Ascension. I uh, represent 165,000 associates yeah. in, uh, in communities across the country. We have 150 hospitals in 20 states. Uh, we're proud to be part of this partnership. Uh, I appreciate your leadership, Mr. President, and uh, I'd like to thank you and uh, Vice President Pence for everything you're doing. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Good job you're doing, too. Uh, I'm Rick Pollock. I'm president of the American Hospital Association, and uh, thank you, Mr. President, for having us in. And I uh, want you to know that we appreciate the leadership of you and your team in uh, putting together this dynamic uh, reserve uh, for the ventilators. You know, uh, you've already heard that there's a little bit of an uneven impact in terms of the disease and the battle that we're fighting. And this will allow us to provide uh, an opportunity to flex so that we can get the uh, equipment to the right places at the right time uh, for those that are really struggling. And this is an innovative approach that we're committed to. Uh, the hospital systems around this table have stepped up to the plate to make commitments. And uh, you have our commitment at the American Hospital Association that we will uh, work with the rest of our field to make additional commitments and make this a success. So Rick, we're also building a very high quality ventilator because you have to make a decision. And I was told it makes a big difference. The level of quality of a ventilator, what is it? What, what is the difference? Do you find it makes a big difference? They're obviously more expensive, uh, more detailed, harder to build, but I hear they are more effective quite a bit. Is that, do you all consider that to be correct? Yes, that's correct. A ventilator is not a ventilator. There are a lot of yeah, different right. versions right. of them right. that have different capabilities. So we're building the one that they say is, that, you know, we're trying to go at a standard that's very high. And you think that's worth it? We think this project it makes is very difference. well worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Great job. Please. Mr. President, Warner Thomas. I'm the CEO of Auctioner Health in New Orleans. Um, we're the largest not-for-profit health system in Louisiana. Uh, we've been caring for uh, about 60 to 65 percent of the COVID patients in New Orleans, um, uh, over a third of them for the entire state. So we have seen a, an escalation over the past few weeks, although we're seeing some flattening of that curve now, and, and we're excited to be part of this program. I um, want to thank you and your administration and certainly our governor, who was helpful in getting ventilators to us when we were going through the, the we process. Got yeah. We got that to him. Yeah. We sent a lot of ventilators to your state, and yeah. we've been working very well with you, Governor, yeah. and with your two senators, too. Right. We appreciate that. It, it made a huge difference for our patients, and, and we're excited to be part of this program so we could help other communities that may be in need of ventilators as well. We also built you a lot of hospitals, and hospital beds in particular, yeah. and we just cut back on the final because you didn't need them, which was great. You didn't need them. So 
You're seeing a flattening right now, right? We are seeing we are seeing some uh, flattening of the curve, and and certainly um, we're hopeful that that continues. You know, over the next couple of weeks, and and the shelter in place has had a has had a major impact in our in our city. Fantastic! Great job. Say hello. Please. Mr. President, my name is Fritz Francois. I serve as the Chief Medical Officer at NYU Langone Health. Can says, uh, sends his regards. And as you know, we've uh, been taking care of patients not only in Manhattan, but also our cohort is in Brooklyn, as well as Long Island. And we've been in the heart of it. And I and, uh, do want to really thank you for not only supporting NYU, but also the New York hospitals. We, it, we've been in the hospital. And, uh, and similarly, we're actually seeing a bit of a flattening and we're continuing and committed to, uh, to taking care of these patients. So once again, thank yeah. you for all your efforts. I spoke to Ken yesterday. We'll, we'll take care of all the situation. You people have uh, really done a fantastic job during this crisis. Please. Yeah, Mr. President, my name is Tommy Halevich. I'm the president and CEO of Cleveland Clinic. Good. We have a strong presence, obviously, in our home state of Ohio, but also a large presence in Florida. Southeast right. coast That's of right. Florida. We built a big one, right? Yes, we built That's a big one. Um, fortunately, in Ohio, uh, the measures by our governor were instituted uh, very early, and we have really not had a surge in the number of patients. Right. And the curve has been flat for almost two weeks. Uh, now, our entire system, we employ 60,000 caregivers. We are, we are having only 170 patients in our entire system, and the number That's has fantastic. been the number has been stable. And what I would also like to echo my colleagues here, that we're thankful for, for the invitation, but I also want to assure that we all collaborate among, among each other and lend a helping hand to those who are, who are in need. So thank yeah. you very much. Well, that's great. And you do have a great governor. Mike has done a great job. He has done a really, really and good job. And we appreciate it very much. So we're going to talk for a couple of minutes, and thank you all very much, media. Right, thank you. Mr. President, will you issue your new guidelines well, in Adair, too? Let's go.